Zoom does not do this justice. I mean, check this place out. We're literally on top of the world. It's incredible to me that the IE Tower is one of the tallest buildings for education in the world. It's in an absolutely amazing location. We're literally sitting here in the middle of the financial district, located next to other skyscrapers from like, you know, massive corporations like KPMG and Price. And right in the middle of them all is a university. You are not going to find another educational building like this. And I know I said that last week with Segovia, but literally IE may have two of the most unique campuses of all time of any university. This tower is a lot more than just classrooms and education facilities. They've also got some fantastic student facilities, a great sports center, which really reminds me a lot of like the American style campus that you see, but somehow packed into this tight, you know, financial district floor space. There's even a little shopping mall with a bunch of restaurants located down here. So you don't even have to go very far if you want to just, you know, grab a bite to eat at Five Guys. There's a metro station nearby and like rides cost about like one euro. So you can literally get just about anywhere in Madrid using the metro and it's super convenient. So even if you don't live in one of the residences that are affiliated with IE, you're going to be close by. And even if you live on the other side of town, like you can get here in about 20, 30 minutes. I already did a university episode back in like 2021 virtually where I interviewed Cora Morrison about the general admissions and information about IE. So if you want to get an overview first, you can go check out that video. But I wanted to go into more detail today. Stuff like the interview. What kind of stuff might you get? What are they looking for? Programs like business, data science, international relations, they're all here today. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about what IE is looking for in their applicants. How do they decide who they're gonna admit? The admission numbers at IE keep growing and it's pretty easy to see why. Like who wouldn't wanna study here? So that means that the university is going to become more and more selective. And so, you know, the admissions process is really important for you to understand. So. What do David and Sophia look for in their applicants? Hi everyone, so my name is David. I'm actually working here at the admission office. I the degrees in technology and data science as well, and a little bit of business. And I'm Sophia. I'm senior manager of admissions in the School of Politics, Economics, and Global Affairs. Our applications have increased by, what, 20% already? Or less, yeah. We take into consideration extra uh, activities outside of class, so learn languages, for example, and practicing a sport at a company competition level and that also says something about them. So of course we take into consideration uh, how they perform within school. At the same time we take into consideration other aspects and other ambitions. Sophia said like the things that actually motivate you as well when you're actually applying for the university as well. It says a lot about you when you write a really good essay as well, why you're actually applying for that particular university. I'm working for the School of Technology and Science for example and we are focusing a lot of like data analytics for example, computer science. We are looking a lot uh, for mathematics and statistics, algebra, depending from which kind of system are you coming as well. International relations with law, international relations with business management, international relations with economics and economics on its own, international relations on its own. We're looking for candidates who are willing to have an impact by working within the private sector or directly within public institutions. If you are willing to pursue a career in international relations, you must enjoy reading. Definitely, it must be upward. 
like the trend must be uh, yeah, yeah, increase upward, yeah. upwards trend that that is something that we're looking for. Speak about trajectory because the last year is going to be taken into consideration, but three or two years before that says a lot about these persons. In grade ninth, this trajectory was excellent. On 10th, there's a drop and on 11th, it's excellent again. What happened in that year? That's going to be a question that we're going to be asking in during the interview. And maybe there's a reason behind. Go prepare to the interview. It's not a uh, big conversation that you're going to have, it's actually going to be a key moment. I usually prefer to have a little bit more like in-depth conversation with them. Really the key that you actually follow what's going on around the world because technology is one thing right now. Yesterday was Facebook, today is TikTok, tomorrow already is ChatGPT. I think it's a key and for both me and I think Sophia as well when she does the interviews like the candidate itself. So not, not your parents, not your friends, not, not your counselor, like you. Why, why are you? What's, what's your point? What you want to do and why are you planning? for this because if motivation I think is the key and you're gonna spend here for the next four to five years exactly. as well so like you really have to be motivated for for this degree nobody no one else is gonna do it for you you're the, gonna be the one who's gonna do it for yourself I'm looking for these professional attitudes so it matters where do you put the spot of the camera how you introduce yourself how you greet your interviewer listen the questions until you know they finish so everything everything says something about the person that you have in front of you. Apply, apply, apply. We are here at any moment, at any time. Please, if you do have any questions, if you do have any doubt, just please go for it. And we look forward to see you hopefully here in the next academic year. Yeah, exactly. So thanks for your interest as well. And hopefully we can see each other very soon, either in Segovia or in Madrid. If you didn't see my video about the Segovia campus, please check it out. It's honestly amazing. And I feel like you would be missing out on a huge opportunity if you didn't try to study in both of these locations. Like Segovia is a mind blowing campus. I've never seen anything like it. And I can say the exact same thing about this. Like I've, they're two completely opposite campuses and yet they're both incredibly unique and unlike anything I've ever seen before. So I'm, my mind is blown. I really think the IE Tower is just like an awesome concept for a campus. Like instead of going with the big sprawling campus where, you know, that's what we usually see at universities, this is something special. This is in the financial district and this area of Madrid is gonna get a lot of investment and development soon. So it's gonna be even bigger and better than what it is today. It's gonna be hard to top this, but uh, we're gonna try. We're still here in Spain for a few more days and this is just the first visit that we've done. So we've got more universities coming up for you. So if you want to study in Spain, you want to check out all of your options, subscribe to the channel. And you know, if you actually care and really want to see these videos when they come out, hit that little bell button. If you don't care that much, don't because then it just shows you things you don't want to see and that wastes your time and it hurts my ratings. So, you know, click it if you want it. And uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.